Now you can see the Democrat strategy playing out here. Democrat Senator Sherrod Brown from Ohio is on Fox right now, and he said, we're not even close to a deal. We're not even close to a deal. McCain came in here and blew it up. They are desperate to blame this on McCain. Now, folks, I want to tell you what happened at the White House meeting yesterday, and you are going to be stunned. You will not, well, sadly, you will believe this. At the meeting, you had McCain and Obama, you had John Boehner, you had dingy Harry Reid, you had uh, Barney Frank, Chris Dodd was in there, there were some others, but those are the, Pelosi was in there, these are the principals. Paulson, the Treasury Secretary, called Lindsey Graham Nasty. This according to Bob Schieffer of CBS. Paulson called Lindsey Graham Nasty and said, look, I need the House Republicans. I need Republicans on this. We can't get anywhere without him. You've got to call McCain. He's the only one that can do it. So that's why McCain goes to Washington and end up having a 4 o'clock meeting at the White House yesterday. They all think they're going into a negotiating session. The president, in order to let everybody heard, deferred to various Democrats, and every one of the Democrats, Pelosi, Reid, Dodd, and Frank, declined to speak and deferred to Obama. So Obama became the official Democrat spokesman in the meeting. This was to hype Obama's leadership and presidential aura and so forth. And what happened next, the first thing out of Obama's mouth, Paulson is in the meeting, and he starts ripping the republic the house republican proposal and asks paulson what he thinks of it this led boehner and the other republicans there to think they have been sandbagged we found out this morning that obama had no clue because he was in transit doing other things he had no clue what the house republican position was what happened was that on the way to the meeting sometime during the day Obama's staff received an email from Treasury Department employees who work for Paulson detailing the House Republican plan. So when, when, they, when the Democrats deferred to Obama, he launched into that. He had no clue what it was. That's why he asked Paulson for his comments. Paulson, I don't know what Paulson said, but this is what led to the fireworks. This is what led to everything breaking down in there. This is why Dingy Harry walked out, because it didn't work. Because Obama, it, it ended up with Obama essentially chairing the meeting, with the meeting falling apart. The president was described as beleaguered, trying to regain control of the meeting. McCain didn't say hardly anything. Everybody was yelling and screaming in there. McCain did not. He said, we've got to put these differences as I work together. You know, typical McCain. According to an Obama campaign source... And this is from the American Spectator blog today. According to an Obama campaign source, the notes on the Republican position, House Republican position, were passed to Obama via senior aides traveling with him, who had been emailed the document via a current Goldman Sachs employee and Wall Street fundraiser for the Obama campaign. The Obama campaign source said it was made clear the memo was from friends and it was reliable. The memo, which basically briefed Obama on the Republican position. So you see, Obama did not defend the Democrat position on this. He, did, he led off with an attack on the Republican position as though it was a shock and a surprise under the auspices that this deal had already been agreed to. The memo that Obama got allowed him and his Democrats to box in Republican attendees and took what Bush had billed as a negotiating session off the rails. Now... A House Republican leader who was not at the White House meeting told the American Spectator that Paulson and his team have not acted in good faith for this president or the administration for which they serve. Paulson, Goldman Sachs, is a Democrat. He's very close to Chuck Schumer and obviously close to Obama. So this whole meeting yesterday essentially was established to show off Obama's leadership skills and negotiating skills, and he blew it. I think the Democrats were so frightened that the truth would come out about what happened in this meeting. Obama started flooding the TV networks about 6.30. He was on Fox News with Brett Hume, he called him. He was on World News today. He was all over the place doing a bit of a CYA without explaining why he was doing a CYA. But I want you to listen. 
to what he said to Brett Hume on the Fox News Channel last night. I think that the way that I've been working over the last week, constantly in contact with the secretary and the congressional leaders, um, uh, you know, may end up creating an environment in which you can actually get something done. So he's admitting nothing got done in there. It's probably not good for him to be in things like this because he, you know, it's better for him to be our way. Somewhere on the sidelines, in constant contact with everybody on the phone. Regardless, what you have to know here, there was no deal on the table that had any consensus. It was all set up, folks, to make it look like McCain wasn't needed. It was all posturing to prevent dialogue, to prevent the opportunity to bring an improved piece of legislation to all of this. And Obama's post-meeting comments said he thought a deal was done. But it wasn't done. McCain was never part of any deal, n neither were House Republicans, and probably not Senator Shelby and DeMint either. So Obama wanted a quick and dirty piece of Bush legislation to fly through. He could taste the money avail available from the sell sale of those assets and uh, go into his acorn buddies. But when he got there, he indicated and illustrated that he hasn't the, the slightest clue in handling a meeting. Liz, more of a press conference here. Britt Hume said, look, if tomorrow midday we are where we are, meaning today, and we've still got an outstanding problem with a package that isn't agreeable, so you can get majorities of both parties, both houses, would it make sense for you to go down to Mississippi, or would it be better for you to stay here and try to do what you could. Well, he, he, here's my uh, observation, Brett, and, and I think it, it may have been confirmed in the meeting today. Uh, when you inject presidential politics into delicate negotiations, uh, sometimes it's not helpful. All right, so once again, Barack Obama admitting that his presence in the White House meeting was a disaster. That's what he's admitting. Now, you wouldn't know that watching last night if you didn't know what happened in there, but now that you do... It's easy to interpret these sound bites. Well, you know, here's my observation. Uh, may have been confirmed at the meeting today when you inject presidential politics into delegate negotiations. McCain didn't say much in the meeting, folks. The yelling and screaming took place, and it broke down, but McCain was not part of it. <laughs> to me, it's the insertion of congressional politics that's making a mess of this. It's the insertion of Democrat Party hack politics. They're not interested in a good deal here for the country. That's not what this is about. This is about power. This is about securing the White House for themselves and their majorities in both houses of, of Congress. They're looking at this purely through a political prism. And as usual, the Republicans here are trying to stay tried and true to their principles, which are based on what's best for the country. Uh, now, since Obama performed so inadequately, caused a meeting to blow up, and could not regain control of it after basically one or two questions that he raised, or points that he made. The Democrats, starting last night, had to circle the wagons and get the spin out, and they're being pretty successful at this. I mean, for how many other places have you heard what really happened in the White House meeting? And you don't want to know why, by the way, Hank Paulson practically begged everybody in that meeting not to say a word about what happened. Wonder why. So if you don't know what happened in the White House meeting, you'd have to say the Democrats spin today that this is all McCain's fault, that his arrival blew this up. That's their theme today, and that's what they're trying to sell. This morning at a Capitol Hill press conference, Dingy Harry and Chris Dunn, I can't... <laughs> These guys make me sick. So here, listen to Dingy Harry today portion of his remarks at the press conference. The insertion of presidential politics has not been helpful. And the Democrats all defer to Obama. They're going to make him their representative in there. All to set him up, to establish his aura. I guarantee if this meeting would have gone differently, you know what the spin after the meeting would have been? And Paulson would have not told anybody not to say anything. The spin would have been, you should have seen Obama. I have never seen anybody command a meeting like he did. He walked in there, had command of the issues, and he pointed at everybody and said, you do this and you do this and you take care of that and we'll get it done. That's what they wanted. They wanted a myth that Barack Obama came in there and took over the White House and was acting as president to get this done. Except one thing happened. He didn't know what to do without the prompter. They forgot to send in the teleprompter. If it went off the rails, Senator Reid, it was your guy, it was your candidate, Barack Obama, who took it off the rails.